looking at antenna alignment as a different section here. In the antenna alignment, um, out of the box, the radios are pre-configured in most cases with the radio ready to be set up for modulation and channel size. So if you used uh, the one-shot configurator that uh, George explained nicely yesterday, uh, you do that uh, in the office before you go to site. In any case, we recommend to do the configuration in the office and not on site because laptops and towers are a difficult thing. If you are making a mistake during the configuration and you are losing access to the radio via your one cable that you have pulled down, you might need to climb up to the radio with a test cable and the laptop. And if it's a tower, this is not really a healthy combination because laptops and towers have a very strained relationship with each other and uh, you're making your life unnecessarily difficult. So before you hang this radio, make sure that the configuration really is what you want. If you don't configure the radio and you leave it simply at default, you have to do the TX, uh, TXA, RXA, which means at least one transmitter in the AP2. In all other radios, you only have one transmitter, but you need to configure at least the transmit receive frequencies, power, and sets of modulation. So you would just adjust the channel size, the center frequency pair, pair your FCC coordination documentation, and then you would be good for alignment. By default, ACM is disabled and the radio is set to four quam modulation. So that's a reference modulation. So once the channel size, frequency pair and TR spacing are set, the radio is ready for alignment. It wouldn't pass data in that state, but if you are just installing it and you're not responsible for setting up the VLANs, the bridge type and all those things, you can do alignment now, which is really what we are after. A couple of things to think about when you think about antenna alignment is that the licensed microwave links use parabolic dish antennas and they all behave the same. So it doesn't matter who the antenna vendor is, what the frequency is. Parabolic dish antennas have all similar behavior. Uh, parabolic dish antennas have narrow beams. So a one foot uh, antenna at 18 gigahertz has 3.3 degree beam width. A six foot dish has 0 0.7 degree beam width. Naturally, as you go up in frequency, this becomes uh, narrower and narrower. A one foot dish at 80 gigahertz is at about 0.8 degrees and a two foot dish is at 0.4 degrees. So you can see that a one foot dish at 80 gigahertz has a beam almost as narrow as an 18 gigahertz six foot antenna. And that tells you why it's harder to align an 80 gigahertz antenna. And you need to be very methodical to be successful. The relationship is quite simple. The higher the gain, the narrower the beam was. The more antenna gain you get, the narrower the beam. So whenever you say, hey, I want more received gain from the antenna or more transmit gain from the antenna, you are narrowing the beam width, which explains why you are getting more power because the antenna is a passive device. You're putting a fixed input power into it, but you're keeping it into a smaller area. And that is why the power in that area is higher. So more power, narrower beam is a very fixed relationship. These antennas are more difficult to align than integrated antennas. When you see these flat panel antennas, 2, 4, 5.8 gig, they are very wide beam antennas with relatively low gain and they're easy to align. So if you have aligned that, that doesn't really, that experience doesn't really prepare you for what happens when you go to the license bands and have directional antennas. Uh, the antenna alignment, each antenna vendor has slightly different positions for the fine adjust balls for azimuth and elevation, right, left, up, down. Again, you need to look at the instruction sheet from the antenna vendor that was shipped with the antenna to find the fine adjust balls and make sure that um, you don't keep this too tight when you use the fine adjust. You need to get it to a point where the lock washers that sit on the back of most of those balls are just expanded. And then you have some tension in the antenna so it's not slack and hanging down and changes alignment when you tighten it. But you don't have so much pressure on it that you're taking these fine thread balls and get them to seize up. <clears throat> 
In order to be successful, you must know the pass calculation. You need to have a pass calculation result, otherwise you're making your life unnecessarily difficult. <clears throat> if you don't have a pass calculation result, you can calculate the link loss using a pass estimation tool, something like pass loss, Google search windows. Some vendors provide marketing tools that do um, free space pass loss calculations. Something like that would work. Uh, you subtract all gains and losses from the transmitter, antennas and cable losses at both ends, and the results equal the estimated receiver power in dry weather. Ensure that the ACM, so the adaptive coding and modulation, and the automatic transmit power control have been turned off before starting to move the antenna. If these are enabled and you are trying to align, you will never... <laughs> I, I shouldn't say never, you are very unlikely to succeed because what happens is that you're moving the antenna and actually making your receive signal level 1 dB worse, which drops one modulation, which allows the ATPC to put out 3 dB more power, so your indicated power goes 2 dB up, even so you made your alignment worse. And that's why an ATPC is a bad tool for you. The same happens with the ACM. In most cases, the fixed top transmit power of the uh, ACM algorithm is a top power for the modulation. So the modulation drops, the transmit power goes up, you see a higher uh, input uh, power into your radio, you think you made your alignment better, you actually made it worse. The one thing to check is, um, especially on shorter links, Will the power at 4 quam overwhelm my receiver and I exceed the maximum input and or I reach the damage level here where I could actually damage the receiver if the transmitter runs at full power? In those cases, you may need to make sure that you're reducing power and you will find that even in your PCN documents or license documents, the transmit power has been reduced already and you need to go to that power. The next question on antenna alignment is, does my antenna point up or down? And the reality is that most links are relatively speaking flat. So here I've taken a three mile link with a hundred foot elevation difference between the two ends. A hundred foot elevation difference, which sounds big, comes down to 0 0.36 degrees. So it falls within the range of the 3 dB beam with of most antennas, even the one foot 80 gig antenna. So if you are taking an antenna and radio and you're installing it, take a digital level with you, put the digital level on the back of the radio, which is perpendicular to the direction of transmission and set it to zero as your starting point. If you have a pass loss report with an antenna alignment section or a PCN document, it gives you an up tilt or down tilt angle, and you can set these with these uh, relatively simple tools, digital level on the back of the radio, and you can uh, already finish one dimension of alignment where you only need to do a fine adjust to get the last dB or two dB out of the alignment, but you have at least a good starting point. You're not going into two unknown dimensions. The antenna alignment is done with the standard voltmeter and uh, the two um, uh, banana plugs that plug into it. Uh, we don't have any high requirements on the voltmeters. Uh, they don't need to be anything fancy. You can go to Harbor Freight and buy the $5 voltmeter. It will do just as fine a job as uh, the $800 fluke voltmeter. The only thing to consider where you can have issues with the $5 voltmeter is if you are near an AM or FM transmitter or um, a terrestrial TV transmitter, is that those voltmeters are not shielded and you take these uh, signals that come from these transmit towers and the uh, voltmeter displays it as a DC voltage. So the maximum voltage our radius can display is somewhere around 2.6, 2.7 volts, and you're seeing five volts. You're close to a transmit site and your unshielded voltmeter picks up this voltage and makes alignment impossible. 
So that's the only time when they um, trade difficulties. You can see if you can find the direction from where this signal comes by taking the voltmeter and holding it to the metal pole on which the antenna is mounted and going with the voltmeter around the pole. And then you will find that there is a spot where the pole provides the shielding for you and you get the accurate voltage. It's rare, it can happen, something to know. And um, there's relatively good voltmeters available on Amazon in the $25, $30 range that don't have these issues because they're actually Chinese copies of the uh, actual $800 fluke designs and they contain shielding. The uh, voltage that you see is proportional to the received power. The lower the voltage, the lower the received power, so you are aligning for maximum here. <clears throat> this is an antenna radiation pattern uh, as it is published by some antenna vendors that tell you, hey, there is a main lobe, there's side lobes. Let me highlight this, so here's your main lobe. Here's your side lobes, first side lobe, second side lobe. And that tells you that the voltage pattern that you will get when you move the antenna right to left or up down will look similar to this pattern. So you can take an antenna pattern with your voltmeter. If you knew exactly every time you had 0.1 degree change, you could write down the voltage and recreate this pattern. This also shows you why it is a really bad idea on millimeter wavelengths to misalign a radio. Uh, some vendors have problems with their maximum receiver input level and they tell you, oh, you just misalign the antenna and you're good. You're not good. If you're misaligning an antenna to get the power level down, let's say you have aligned it here to get the power level down so that you don't hurt the receiver and now it gets windy, and the wind pushes your antenna in this direction, you see that here you get a 15, 20 dB drop and not the uh, variation of plus minus 3 dB for which the antenna was designed around the center if you had aligned for the center. So this link, and this is um, uh, 11 gig antennas. On an 80 gig antenna, these holes can look much deeper and go 40 dB down you get a link that drops very quickly because you misaligned it. So it's not a method that is recommended or feasible for um, uh, for for the alignment of a microwave antenna. This antenna pattern is for a 23 gig antenna and you see already that the side lobes are not as clearly defined, but again, it is a, a, a pattern that is similar to the one before that was idealized with power dropping with the angle. But the reality is that whenever you look at this, this doesn't really help you with alignment until you take this antenna pattern and you mentally fold it over towards you. This is another way that antenna patterns are presented on the right. It's called a Smith chart where you can uh, see better how this uh, relates to each other angular wise. But again, it's the same thing. You have a main uh, peak or the main beam of your antenna here and that's the reference zero and then you have side lobes here. What you see better here is that the side lobes are not the same right and left. They might be slightly different. Um, no antenna vendor looks at the side lobes and says, oh, they are not the same. We're doing something about it. The only thing they care about is the main lobe and that the side lobes are below the FCC limits. So many side lobes coming out here, uh, around here. First uh, side lobe is down somewhere between 12 to 15 dB. So if you are doing alignment, you're 12 to 15 dB down. It doesn't matter how long you have tried, you're still on the side lobe. And that's really all we can tell you to that. There is no, no answer that we can give you where we can say, hey, let's go in the software and find 12 dB. If you're 12 to 15 dB down, you're on the first side lobe. If you are 25 to 30 dB down, you are cross-polarized. One end is vertical, the other is horizontal. And that's really um, the first things to check for. Uh, 
<clears throat> now I will explain to you how you get from a side lobe to the main lobe. And the beauty is that you can apply this to any equipment vendor, to any antenna vendor, as long as you have parabolic dish antennas. Let's assume that, for example, the calculated target receive signal level is minus 24 dBm, and we're measuring minus 38 dBm. The missing receive power here is 14 dB, and we said 12 to 15 would indicate that we are on the first site load. <coughs> You could refer to the manufacturer's antenna pattern and see the number of degrees of alignment of the main or center lobe, but usually you don't have that around. And very few antenna vendors today actually give you the uh, real antenna pattern of the antennas. They give you a pattern envelope, which is simply the FCC standard they have to uh, comply with, and they say we're falling within this. So it becomes useless to you. But we can uh, mark uh, a vertical um, azimuth position with an X in our um, pattern here, perform a systematic search. And that will look like this. So this is the key. So you see this antenna pattern. Let me get my highlighter back. So this is the center. And this is equal to this point. So I've taken this antenna pattern and you folded it over towards you, and now you're looking at it from the front like if you have a bullseye. If you now go and do your antenna alignment and this is your first try, that red line, you will get a voltage pattern that will look something like this. So that's how your voltage pattern will look. And what happens now, uh, for most people that don't understand antenna patterns, but that have done lots of installation work, they say, hey, I found a signal here, and I'm tightening it down here. That is at this point. And after I've tightened it down here, I go up, down. And you can see based on the wave pattern here that the blue line and the red line will give you the exact same result. So the key is, that you count the number of peaks, one, two, three, four, and there would be five and six. If you get an even number of peaks, then you're on a side lobe. If you get an uneven number, you're on the main lobe or you will be able to get to the main lobe. Let's say that your line goes here, you get peak one, two, three, you tighten at the highest peak, you go down, you have the center. If you get an even number, one, two, three, four, you go to the lowest value between the two peaks, and then you go in the other dimension and you hit the center. And it doesn't matter if you try this vertically or horizontally. It's the same because it's a parabolic dish antenna. It's circular. It has the same performance. And that way, you will find the center of the main, the main beam of the antennas. And that's how easy it is. So look at the voltage pattern. Uh, you can take uh, markers with you where you have different colors to reflect different voltages. As I said, these, these two points here have the, nearly the same value, but uh, these side lobes are not calibrated. So if they are in the 12 to 15 dB range down, they mean the same thing. And then you go align for the minimum between, go in the other dimension, and you hit the center. And that's how antenna alignment is done. All parabolic dish antennas, all vendors, always the same method. And then you get a nice uh, voltage peak here that aligns with the minus 24 dBm that you were after to start with. So that's, that's really the key to antenna alignment.